People drink caffeine, especially coffee, as if their life depends on it. And in certain cases, that might almost literally be true. Although, even if it is ubiquitous in the world, does that mean it's actually good for us, especially in relation to our heart health? Well, in this series of videos, we'll be probing the science on the effect caffeine, especially from coffee, has on our cardiovascular risk. Here, now, I'd like to present some data across a few studies that indicate some worrying effects of caffeine on blood pressure. From there, I'm also going to add some information that will affect about 15% of you, increasing your potential risk relative to the rest of the world. Let's begin. The data I'll show you comes from two studies investigating the effect of caffeine on blood pressure. The first study simply had participants come into the lab after not consuming caffeine for 12 hours, tested their blood pressure multiple times to get an average reading, and then gave them a dose of caffeine equivalent to 6 milligrams per kilogram. So for reference, a 100 kilogram person would consume 600 milligrams. And after one hour, they had their blood pressure taken again in the exact same manner as before. The second study recruited participants and put them in one of two groups, the control or the decaf consuming group and the treatment or the caffeine consuming group. Their blood pressure was taken before being given each of their respective treatments, so decaf or caffeine, and then they were given their treatments. So the decaf group obviously consumed a decaf coffee and the caffeine group consumed 200 milligrams of caffeine in coffee form. After 20 minutes, their blood pressure was measured anew for comparison. So there's more to the study design, but I'm giving you a high level view of how the research was performed. But if you want more information, check out my detailed analysis of these studies. That all explained, what were the results? Let me walk you through the data from the first study. Uh, here we're measuring systolic blood pressure, which is the top number when you get your blood pressure checked. It's identified by the greatest level of pressure your heart is producing against your arteries. The other measure is, as you can likely guess, the diastolic blood pressure, which is the bottom number in your blood pressure readings and corresponds to the lowest pressure of your heart exerting on your arteries. On the x-axis, we have non-habituated caffeine consumers, meaning people who consume less than 100 milligrams of caffeine per day, I realize that isn't zero, but that's how the researchers defined it. Uh, we also have habituated caffeine consumers, so people who consume at or above 300 milligrams of caffeine a day. Now, the white bars indicate the blood pressure before consuming caffeine, and the black bars indicate after they consume the six milligrams per kilogram of weight worth of caffeine. As you can see, the systolic numbers don't change significantly, and that applies to the non-habituated and the habituated. On the other hand, the diastolic pressure indicates an increase in blood pressure in the non-habituated individuals only. So this data implies that caffeine increases diastolic blood pressure, but only in those that consume little to no caffeine per day. But that isn't a complete story because the second study shows slightly different results. The second study comparing the decaf consuming control group versus the caffeine consuming group showed that caffeine consumption increased blood pressure significantly, not only diastolic but also systolic as well. Okay, so both studies show increases in blood pressure from caffeine consumption. And if you're wondering if it's only in non-habituated consumers in the second study, then first off, good question, and second, no. The habituated consumers also experienced an increase in blood pressure, systolic and diastolic. Some divergent results that have a number of possible explanations. One, the study design was different with one study measuring blood pressure in 20 minutes time and the other measuring after one hour. Two, the definition of habituated in the second study was a consumption of over 90 milligrams of caffeine, which is significantly less than the first study's 300 milligrams. And a third reason will be explained in the detailed analysis, because it's too much that I can explain in a shortened format. Now, the bottom line is that there are appreciable differences, but ultimately we see consensus on one fact. 
Caffeine increases blood pressure. However, that isn't the full story, not yet. I mentioned a subpopulation of people that may be at greater risk, of which 15% of people watching this would fall under. Well, a minority, but still a sizable minority of people have a gene mutation in their liver that changes the way that they metabolize caffeine. You see, your liver expresses or reads a gene called CYP1A2, and that gene produces the enzyme known as cytochrome P450. This enzyme binds to caffeine molecules and metabolizes them, or converts them into a series of other molecules. Essentially, it removes caffeine from your body. Yet some people have a mutation, a variation in that CYP gene that makes the enzyme less effective. This mutation comes in two forms, the AC variant and the CC variant. Both of these variants, mutations, lead to a slower caffeine removal because of the structure of the enzyme produced is affected. So people with an AA variant metabolize caffeine quickly, while people with an AC or CC variant metabolize it slowly. Now that you know that, if we revisit the blood pressure results, we see some interesting differences from our previous results. So we have our fast metabolizers with the AA gene variant and the slow metabolizers with the AC variant. In systolic blood pressure, where we did not see an increase before, we do not see an increase for the fast metabolizers, but we do see a significant increase in the slow metabolizers. If you're wondering if this is only in the non-habituated, the answer is yes. The effect is not present for habituated slow metabolizing individuals, but the plot thickens when we look at diastolic blood pressure. In diastolic pressure, these individuals exhibit elevated blood pressure even before consuming caffeine. So while caffeine does increase blood pressure, even before consuming a drop, they have elevated blood pressure. The kicker though, isn't just that their blood pressure is elevated, but that elevated blood pressure is found in people who consume caffeine regularly. This data is confirmed in the second study as well. So these studies show that if you have a slow caffeine metabolism gene, your blood pressure is associated with being elevated by routine caffeine consumption. But while it is concerning to see these effects from caffeine, especially in slow metabolizers, as well as in the general population, the real question is if these results translate to long-term negative health effects. Do we see increased risk of heart disease from long-term caffeine consumption? In the next video in this series, that's what we'll find out. I'll speak to you then.